Well, welcome. It says we're live. We'll wait a minute here for some people to come in. We'll start uh, commencing with the second edition. You know what? I'm going to have to get my iPad so I can watch the chat without having to look back behind me. So, let me get that up. Okay. We got her now. Entry. Okay, there we are. Come on. Now, if it's now, if it's there, we go. <clears throat> All right, we got, we got a few watching. Okay, so now I can see the chat without having to turn around. As you can see, I took my plan. I laid it underneath the glass. Won't be building this probably for a while. We'll get the wing done. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I cut, I cut them... Uh, I cut all the ribs for this panel last night. I figured we worked two hours tonight because we're getting close to the gnats. <laughs> I've got to hustle it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the uh, wing cradle, turn it over. We're going to take this part and put it on the bench. You can tell I built a few wings out of this. Take this far material out of this. Come on. Okay. Okay, I had a box, there it is, with pins and stuff in it. You got to have some extra parts and these extra parts are just some scrap wood and I'll show you what I mean here as soon as I can find a piece I guess we can use this what you need to do Get a piece like this, and you want to cut down the middle or whatever. Yep, now they're just scrapped anyway, so it don't matter. All right. I'm going to 
to start cutting these down this way, about an inch, inch long. Doesn't have to be perfect. These represent the sheeting. In order to build the wing straight, you got to set the wings in the cradle straight. So all, all the shims have to be shimmed up. Can you guys hear me okay? I, I hate YouTube. I can't tell what's going on. Okay, good. All right. In order for this wing to be built straight, it has to be all the spars and all the ribs and everything have to be shimmed. The thickness of the sheeting, the thickness of the trailing edge. Otherwise, you'll build a warp into it. So we got some pieces here. That's, that's plenty for now. You take your shim, you set them out here like so, underneath the ribs, where the ribs are going to go. I suppose you could cut just one long piece, but... I've always just used some scrap. Okay, we're going to let's look at this spar and see which way it bows. This is six pound wood. We're going to try to build this wing perfect. The other wing was good, but not perfect. We're going to try to build this one perfect. Perfect is better than good. Okie dokie. Of course, the next thing we got to do is we got to put ribs in here. Oh, we're going to need a trailing edge too. Now I have to decide do I want an inch wide or what here? So I had selected my wood. This was inboard wood. This is inboard wood. We need a piece of trailing edge wood. Eighteen seventeen. 
13, 18, 18. So we got to have three. Oh, wait a minute. These were all leading edge sheeting. Oh, I got them. That's leading edge. I marked them. Outboard. Leading edge. Trailing edge. Getting, is that right? Inboard. Inboard. Okay, outboard. Two, three. You know, I think I'd rather have the 18 than the 17 as a trading edge. Okay. I'm confused. This is one wing. This is two wings. Let's, let's use the 18s for a trailing edge. 17. Because there's less of it. 17, 17, 17, 18, okay. Now, it's only one gram, but one gram makes a big difference. You do that several times. Now, we got some other pieces here. Here we go. We could use this as well. Yeah, let's use this. We'll use this up. Okay. You know what? It's awful dark in here. I need to turn on this light. That's better. Kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, let's uh, square one edge. Measure up, uh, let's do seven eighths. Seven eighths, that's uh, seven of those bitty marks. I hate this ruler, it's terrible. Yeah, 
And we'll make it 15 sixteenths. Fifteen sixteenths. That's 15 of those little tiny marks. Probably ought to use a pencil. That way we can get four out of this one sheet. Maybe. Don't use the next piece that you cut. Use the first piece you cut. You'll have stack tolerances. Nope, we're not going to get them all out of that. Oh, well. Too bad. It's almost there, but yeah, it is there. No, it's not. Somehow this this is, didn't make it. So we got three out of one piece. Let's get another piece. Some beautiful wood, it really is. We got nine watchers, we're really smoking right along. This will become evident what the shims were for as soon as I get this done, and I'll explain it to you for the, for the guys who don't already have a grip on what's happening.
Now, I build my wings in halves because of where I'm at. I suppose if I was back in St. Louis, I'd build it all in one piece, but I build it in, you know, inboard and outboard and join them together in the center, just like you would a foam wing. And it's worked. You know what? Let's cut an extra one of these. So in case we got one that screws up. Extra is good. I'm a little under the weather, so I hope I sound all right to you guys. Okay, we got enough trailing edge wood now. Okay. The reason for the shims is those shims are the same thickness as this stock right here so that the ribs will sit in level because the sheeting that goes on is this thick. If you didn't have that, You'd build your wing in a positive. So you build a positive warp in it, which would not be good. So we're going to sight down here and see which one is this is good. This is straight. Well, it doesn't matter. So I already have it marked out. I got the line on there where I built the last one. Pin that to your book. Okay, we basically have the saddle or the wing cradle set up, ready to accept some ribs. Now we need is some ribs. So the first one we'll do, we got ribs here. And this doesn't take long once you, once you get to doing it. That's the rib set from last night. We're going to need a sanding block. And we're going to need a, sand, a spar stick. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, I got a, a block with a piece of 80 on it. That's good enough. So we'll start off with 1 and R1. Or center and R1. So this is the center. It goes in the cradle just like so. Let's see, is that going to be enough overhang? Not really. Not really. Because I'm going to have a piece of three. We're going to might have to cut these again. Shoot. Better to find out now, though, than get it built and go, holy crap. Let's see. Uh, get the tip rib. Use this one. Use this one. This is in the way. I think we're going to have to recut that trailing edge material.
Okay, now let me show you why. Oh, crap. I can use that. What else were those cap strips? Because I'm setting the way these are normally built, the wood is capped on the outside of the trailing edge. And this would probably work no problem for that. However, the way that I've been doing these wings is I've been letting this sheeting overhang the rib set so that there's no crappy looking joint at the trailing edge. And the, the uh, flap can set inside the trailing edge. Well, I've I made a mistake and I've set this up for the old way. So we need to recut those trailing edge pieces. Oh. Not a problem. Not a problem. So let's measure this. We want it on that line, but we want it hanging over. We got a quarter. So it's five sixteenths more. Yeah. We'll cut these inch and a quarter and sand them. What was I thinking? Inch and a quarter. It's the kind of stuff that happens when you do live shows. Let's see what this is. This inch and a quarter, perfect. Okay. Yep. What am I thinking? So what will happen is I'll get this built. I'll run a, a sanding bar, 36 inch long sanding bar on it and sand it down to my desired thickness instead of trying to monkey around and make it exact. I like to sand anyway. I got an inch and a quarter. How many nights do you guys think it'll take me to build this wing? Inch and a quarter. We'll just do two pieces. Come next week, this wing will be finished. We got to get on to painting. We only got five months. This probably won't be ready for the Nats, but I can try. Need a backup. I'll tell you this. It's not like I'm going to miss the Nats for not having an airplane. I got 15 of them. 
in St. Louis. All, all capable. Some better than others, but Fifteen full-size stunt ships, St. Louis. I said I needed another one. That's more like it. Much more better. I'm going to make these pins, put these pins in a position that, <clears throat> that when you get the whole wing built, you can pull the pins out. Otherwise, you got to tear shit up to get at it. Okay. All right, this is our trailing edge for the other side, not these pieces. What a bummer. Need to use his cap strips. Cap strips. Get rid of this. Center and R1. So I take two of them here, and I got I, I marked them according to the to the foam template on which way they orient, and you want to put them back on the template in the same orientation. Hey, if you're not a paid subscriber, please consider joining, becoming a paid subscriber so I can help this ch keep this channel alive. Become a member. It's $4.95 a month. Hell. Unless you're a big tipper, then it's $25. So you, know, so you got R1 and R1 in that area. So put that one on there like so. I mean, the wealth of knowledge I give you guys could be worth something. And the sheer entertainment of a knucklehead building toys. Or if you're so inclined, just a super chat. Of course, you want to like, subscribe, and share the videos. We're growing. We're at 3901 now. We'll never see a million, but unless they start dancing or something weird, telling stupid stories. Okay, so now we got the wood on the templates where they set that foam block. Come on, dude. CRS is kicking in. I just had it here. There it is. It's hiding.
can just sand down so it touches the foam. You know, these things are so simple. Hey, Craig. Thank you. This has to be the most accurate way to build a wing out there. If you pay attention to the steps. It'll be straight. You want to make sure that it gets down flush. You don't want to leave it sticking up or else you'll have a lump in the sheeting. And that's one side. I mean, you can cut ribs faster. Of course, you can always buy a kit and have a you know, laser cut parts. That's faster. But if you want a scratch bill, this is pretty damn accurate. And it doesn't take that long. Another thing doing it this way is the ribs are all angled to meet the sheeting absolutely perfect if you put it back in the wing saddle the correct way. So it makes for a lighter, stronger airplane, less glue. I was cleaning this place up here and I couldn't the vacuum wasn't vacuuming so I emptied out the bag it's not a bag but the bottom and it was clear and I put it back together and started right nothing happening the top half had six years of sawdust packed in there packed like a I looked in there it's got a second canister on top I didn't know about I mean, it was solid like concrete. Okay, that's a perfect rib there. A little bit right there. Remember, we want perfect on this one. I'll take the extra time to make it perfect. Okay, now we need to cut this, the wing spar slots. Well, most people take a knife and cut that. Uh -uh, wrong way. So we need to get a piece of 3 16 which I had here just a little bit ago. What did I do with it? There we go. This is rockwood, so... We can use 
this explode? It's a 48 inch piece of rock 316. I'll just cut a few inches off right here. Cuts like hardwood. <laughs> Cut a tool out of this. Shoot, this is our sander. Yeah, we need some 180. Yeah. Um, right here. This tip right here is worth the price of admission. Yeah, I really like that. This side's angled. And this was the cut side. Gotta make it square. Okay, there's our uh, our spar sander. Okay, we're going to mark these in the correct orient orientation, the R1, knowing that's up, this is center. Okay, we can take these apart.
don't matter. I got to take them back. Well, this one here. Let's have to cut the front out. All right, and this goes back in the cradle. We know that we got that complete. And we got R2 and 3. Put these off to the side. You guys figured it out? It ain't no big deal yet. Anybody could do it. You got a book, anybody can fix a car, especially a good shop manual, a good, you know, factory manual. Take wrench A and put on nut B, turn counterclockwise. It's real simple. Doesn't take much brain power to do what I do. And like always, a good mechanic is, doesn't know everything, but he knows where to find out what the problem is. Or he knows somebody who knows everything. Because <laughs> those people who think they know everything are particularly aggravating to those of us who do. Okay, we just repeat the process. All the way down the line. You know what? I wonder if I should change the sandpaper. Down there. great system takes a little getting used to but like everything practice makes perfect building a beautiful wing hard to come by now though yeah the wood is <laughs> okay. we cut these cradles over at john's i have a hot wire in st louis I just don't have any foam. John's been a big help to me. I'd have been wading through. I mean, how would I build airplanes here in Dayton if I didn't have John someplace that I could use some equipment? Build it and wait till I went back to St. Louis to paint, drill, sand, solder, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. 
Yep. I don't have anybody like that in St. Louis. Not anymore. They're all dead. But I do have a nice shop in St. Louis. This hobby is just a bunch of old guys, you know, and as we pass away or give it up, we'll be gone here shortly, I'm sure. Way of the dinosaur. He switched to this profile right here. He's got a he's got an SV on the on the building board, but he's basically using this wing. This is the best wing I've ever used. How this wing came about. I was talking to Billy. He said the best wing that he used was the USA one, but it wouldn't carry any weight. Well, in order to carry weight, it just got to be a little thicker. So I made it a quarter inch thicker, and this is what you get. Of course, the uh, USA one is a uh, I beam wing, but this is that airfoil, which is a shoe airfoil. I could make this airfoil off my shoe. You know, these guys that talk about I got a I got the profi wing rib profiler CAD pro give it up man just they're all within a pencil line and they talk about Reynolds numbers but we don't fly in scale air so close enough Brick will fly if you put enough power on it. Just look at an F4. I suppose this will take about a week's worth of work. Seven now. We could do two hour specials, I guess. I do have to get it, get the move on to get this airplane ready to start painting if it's going to be ready next time. So instead of one hour, do two hours a day. Of course, I might take a break a couple times. You know, I get tired of doing this. got no idea how, hard it, how how disciplined you have to be to start at seven or start at six every night and work for an hour after you've worked all day or whatever it's tough tough to be disciplined to do and then to talk for an hour with nobody to talk to That's what I want you to do. I want you guys to try it. 
start talking right now to yourself or whatever. Hopefully nobody's in. See if you can make it all the way through this program talking to yourself. We'll see how you do. My streams are unscripted, off the top of my head, impromptu. Okay, that's good enough. Now we need to cut these slots. Paper's coming off. I have to glue it on. Yeah, I do it so well. Yeah. I don't know about all that. R2. All right, three. Before you glue them in, you want to make sure to get them in square. We'll, we'll make a square so that they're square with the bench. And I'll show you how to get that. Yeah. Okay, you guys got any questions? I mean, I want to take a break here for a second. Drink of water. <coughs> Get a drink of water. Go to the bathroom. Sit four ribs a night. It'll take one, two. One, two. One. Two, so it'll be three, maybe one week per side, so two weeks getting the wing completely framed. Okay. 
Okay, give me a second to go to the bathroom. Okay. Maintain ribs at angles. Yes, it makes the wing stronger. Anytime you can point to point angle anything, it'll be stronger. You got a cold. I keep forgetting you guys are in. The, yeah, we're in winter. Well, that's good. 90 and 70. That's that's warm. <laughs> yeah, I got a cold or something. Uh, yeah. Let me sit down here. R4. So that's this one. Four or five. We'll do a couple more and then we'll call it a night. Thanks for what? Oh. Not only that, if they're angled, you can let use less ribs. Less ribs means less weight. I don't know, lighten these things up, they'll leave parts off. Well, that's why if you look at a, a bridge, all the trusses are angled. Not, none of them are ever straight up and down. Ain't my idea. Wish it was. Wish I was that smart. I wouldn't be working right now if it was. What I need is a fine belt sander. I could go, oh, <laughs> be done. Hey, Miguel, buenas, buenas tardes, or buenas noches, or whatever time it is over there. Que hora son? Okay. We still got a magnum to build. Can you tell me the angles you use? Nope. I can't. Rico.
Well, that's a good question, Rico. Does a lighter model need less power? No. You can, you can never have enough power. Arr, arr, arr. That's Tim Allen. I, I once, if you go back and look at Wendy's videos, you'll see my Viper 8. That was basically this airplane, this platform, PA-65 on a pipe. Looked a little different, but they're all the same. It weighed 48 ounces. Unfortunately, I converted it to electric. Bad mistake. I ruined that airplane. Because I wanted more power. <laughs> have a, a PA-51 or whatever, so, or a PA-40, but why would you do that? It's all the same case, the same weight. Why would you want a less powerful engine? I, it didn't make sense to me. They made them really light and back in the day of Fox 35 because Fox 35 was like having a rubber band on your airplane. I think it was gutless wonders. Well, everybody was running Fox 35s. They had a G2146. When I was a kid, I don't know if I told this story ever or not. I won't mention his name. But when I was a kid, I had a guy that I, I built with all the time. He spent a, he went camping with us and he spent time over our house. And well, I bought a junior nobler. It was built by somebody else. It was beautiful. It was blue. And it had a Vico 19 in it. And I really loved that airplane. It, I had so much fun with that thing. One day in the garage, when everybody was over there, the engine came up missing. I didn't have any money to replace it, so I was out. You know, I'm not wasn't gonna try to retrofit anything into that airplane because it was just too nice. So I didn't fly that airplane for a full season. That same guy that took it, my best friend, 
at least had the the guts to say i stole your engine here it is and he gave it back to me that was i'll never forget that yeah that's right yeah i'll never forget that stole my engine and then gave it back i think those engines were about 20 bucks i don't know they're you could buy a mccoy for 9.95 and i think that vico was 20 bucks and it was way out of my price range I remember a Nogar kit was only five ninety five. I gave Dan a can of paint. So I can't remember monogram spray spray paint for plastic cars. That can of paint. That spray can of paint when I was a kid was sixty nine cents. And that was expensive. That was like six dollars and ninety cents. That can of paint on Amazon cost me sixteen dollars for a sixty-nine cent can of paint. Blows my mind. But his pilot turned out good. So that's all that counts. And I got a great steak dinner out of the deal. It's done that someone, never mind your friend, stole your engine. Yeah. Well, I hope he's doing okay. I haven't, I haven't heard from him in 35 or 40 years. I hope all those guys that I flew with as a kid will someday find this channel and See that I'm still building and uh, flying. Maybe they'll come back to the hobby. Because I I always look at the at the you know the contest results and see if I recognize any of those names from back in the old neighborhood. That was California. I grew up in California, and of course. I don't see those names, so they probably got a life, moved on, model airplanes is the least of their. There's very few of us that the bug actually sticks for life. And this is guys that come on here and have fun with it. You'll find that most of the guys that it sticks with for life are either pilots or motorcycle guys. A lot of motorcycle guys do this hobby. Yeah, my best friend stole my engine, but I appreciate he had the guts to give it back. I knew I didn't misplace it, you know, in the garage.
if I come over to your house and there's ten thousand dollars on the table, which I I have seen more, thirty. It'll be there when you get back when I'm there. R5. R4. Just ain't worth it. Well, I lived there, and then I was stationed in California, too, for a while. Miramar, Top Gun. That hangar you see, I've been in. <laughs> Ten years before that movie, but I was in there. And probably probably one of the only guys you ever talked to to work on uh, F4U Corsair. Down by the tower, they had an F4U on display, and they said, "Can you go down there and fix the covering and paint that thing?" Yeah, yeah, why not? Toter got the tow motor and towed her back, and well, what the hell's going on here? Right there. Should have stayed in the Navy. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Number six now. Oh, no. That's oh, going the wrong direction. That's why. R6. Here we go. We got our shit together now. Seven. I was trained as an AMS, which is Aviation Structure Mechanic, tin bender. And the only time I ever bent any metal was in Millington, Tennessee, in A school. The rest of the time, I was a painter. I think everybody in the Navy is a painter. I didn't paint no walls or bulkheads or floors or anything decks overheads whatever you want to call them they paint none of that painted airplanes but still just a painter painter of gray Well, John was a BB stacker on B-52s. He was in SAC. They wanted him to go to EOD, but they don't last long. He was smart.
I didn't want to be around them red shirt guys. Didn't want to be around the grapes either. But. It's not going as fast as I thought it was going to go. Oh, well. Get tired. Getting tired. I think we're going to end this program. I'll eat dinner and lay down and go to sleep. I was going to do two hours, but can't make it. You guys got any questions on lost phone building? It's not a big deal. Simple. And once you get all of, this is like, as Hunt calls it, wok building. Like when you cook with a wok, you have to cut the vegetables and the, the meat and stuff, and you throw it in the pot and simmer it around, and out comes a meal. Well, that's just like this. you got to cut all the parts. And when you get them all cut, this thing will go together in 15 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's just cutting all these parts and getting all the shit ready to go. Everything, you know, if you get all the parts cut and fit, there's there's never any adjustment or sanding or anything. You just they just go together and that's it. Shouldn't need to fiddle far around. Everything's perfect. I got the I got my shop up on my computer. My shop in St. Louis. Every time I look at that, I go, man, I need to be go back. <laughs> Get back there. I'll show you. Okay, you watching that screen there? Watch this. This is my shop in St. Louis. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to be there now? Getting homesick. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this evening. I'm tired. I'm going to cook me a TV dinner and go to sleep and get up and do it again tomorrow. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And if you're not a member, please consider joining, becoming a paid subscriber, a paid member down there. It's right next to the join button. It's $4.95 a month. And the stuff that I show, will certain, it's certainly invaluable. To uh, help you build a better model. I mean, I see 
the models getting better and better and better at the nationals. I, I, I can't take credit for it, but, but I got to believe that uh, they're watching. And that's a good thing. All right, like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 o'clock, Fairwinds Tank Mines. See ya.